Hello everyone. So uh, today we are going to discuss about the material which is the most abundant on earth and the most misused one without which we cannot live which constitutes major portion of our body. I think you might have guessed it right. We are talking about water. So today we'll discuss about water as an engineering material Water is normally either used as a coolant or as a steam generator. So whenever we are generating steam out of it, which is used further for other purposes, in a steam generation, it needs to be extremely pure. Because when you use it in a boiler and it do possess some kind of impurities, those impurities are going to lie behind in the boiler and they may cause further trouble to the boiler. So when it is used as a steam generator, we need to know whether impurities are present or not. While when you use it as a coolant, there is as such no direct contact of the surface along with the water. So even if the water is impure, it can take away the heat. But here, if the water is impure, it is going to create trouble in the boiler. For that, we need to find out certain qualities of water. So let us see. I am going to talk about water and water is especially uh, unique because it is H2O wherein the electropositive element is combined to electronegative element and that's how it works as a universal solvent. It do have many specific properties which are listed here and you know that. Now the pure water has to be colorless, odorless and tasteless but it do render some kind of uh, these things if impurities are present in it. So for that, we need to first identify from where have you got the water from. So basically the source is the first step to identify. So if you want to use the water further, first you have to identify from where have you taken the water. So if I just want to conclude it briefly, there are major three sources of water. First could be surface water, second is ground water and third is rain water. Now as you know rain water is almost purified form of water. But when it is surface and ground you need to see whether uh, in surface especially like it could be a still water or it could be a flowing water right. So you have to identify whether the source from where you have taken the water is flowing in nature. Uh, let's say rivers, streams, sea, they come in this category. We call them as still. It could be ponds, lakes, reservoirs, etc. So once you identify that you have taken the sample from a still source or from a flowing source, you'll be able to predict whether it is impure or which kind of impurity could be possibly present in it. Similarly, if it is groundwater, like examples could be springs, well, tube wells, etc. So you have to treat it accordingly. So in order to use that water for further application, the first step is to identify these sources. Once you are done with the source, you need to identify what could be the possible impurities present in the water. So impurity is obviously that undesirable uh, compound which is present in the water and which affects the main property of water that is being colorless, odorless, tasteless etc. So if it is affecting these that means definitely that is an impurity. It might present in the small amount or maybe in the large amount but then you have to treat it. So commonly if you want to divide the impurities of water you can call them either as dissolved or as suspended and the third one is living. So biological impurities we have kept in the third category. Simply you can say that these are living means which are having life but are present in the water and these two are non-living means they don't have life but they are present in the water right now if it is living that means they have life now depending on the size of the particle the size of the organism you can classify it as microorganism or macroorganism 
if the sizes is small the examples could be fungi bacteria virus etc and macro you may increase the size it could be like fish etc right if they are present you have to treat water obviously now coming to this one wherein is depending on the size of the particle right now the size if you remember if the colloidal solution it was like true solution then you went to colloidal solution and then it was suspended i hope you do remember if it is less than one nanometer it would be true solution if it is greater than one and falls in less than 100 nanometer that goes in colloidal range and if it is greater than that that becomes suspended so dissolved impurities are those which are dissolved that means you cannot see them you cannot predict whether they are present or not because they are in the dissolved state definitely the size of the particle is very less and it is dissolved now on the basis of like if it is having carbon hydrogen uh, major component you can call it as an organic if it is not you can call it as an organic and apart from the solid gas also are present in the water i hope you do remember dissolved gases like dissolved oxygen carbon dioxide nitrogen etc are present in the water similarly organic compounds you can call uh, like glucose starch kind of thing sugar in inorganic you may like nacl is dissolved in it and uh, calcium magnesium salts are also dissolved in it now coming to the suspended one suspended is typically uh, typically different right suspended means they are you are able to see so you can see them they are present in the water if it is in colloidal range you may see the brunian motion of uh, the particle they keep on dancing in the compound you can see right and again based on the same thing you can divide them as inorganic or organic third one colloidal is uh, basically kept because uh, we want uh, like if the particle size is like it is not settling down so you can any time call it as colloidal and moreover if you cannot sub classify it as either inorganic or organic you may go ahead with the colloidal thing let's say inorganic so like sand clay silica particles etc they are inorganic at the same time organic dyes and oil globules etc they are inorganic right so they are like dissolved in the compound uh, not dissolved sorry suspended and then they are colloidal like uh, anything which you throw in the water maybe any fabric textile uh, particle or leaves stone etc they'll come in this particular thing so basically first you identify the source of water and then you identify the impurity of water then only we can utilize or apply the water uh, accordingly so just have a quick check of dissolved impurities i have already discussed inorganic organic and gases then uh, suspended impurities inorganic organic and colloidal and then going ahead with living matter microorganism and macroorganism that is what uh, it's all about so uh, uh, today what we have seen up till now is what uh, basically is the sources of water present and what are the basic uh, impurities which could be present in the water and that's it so in the next lecture i would be covering about the main property of water which is uh, nothing but uh, hardness of water uh, till then keep liking and uh, subscribing the channel thank you